Alternative data often uncovers insights that traditional data sets might overlook. Could you share your thoughts on how alternative data can reveal emerging trends in patient behavior or healthcare utilization, things that are uh, critical in, um, in an investment process, and how this might influence decision makers, decision making for investors? Yeah, absolutely. I'm Julia Fitzgerald. I'm the director of healthcare data sets at Ernest Analytics. So we, uh, our business model is we partner with companies that have large data sets as a byproduct of their core business, but don't necessarily have the in-house data infrastructure and expertise to monetize those data sets. Um, and so we partner with those companies, we ingest their data, we do a lot of cleansing and refining and transformation to develop um, actionable products to sell into financial services. There we go. Um, and so um, generally what we found in selling healthcare, alternative healthcare data sets to financial services is I'd say that there are kind of three key areas of differentiation that really resonate for the financial services sector. Um, so I'd say it kind of falls into buckets of like the timeliness of the data as compared to traditional research solutions, um, the granularity or richness of the data, and then the longitudinality of the data or the ability to track patient trends over a longer time horizon. Um, and so I'll give a quick example of each of these. So when we talk about timeliness of the data, one of the things, I'd say that one of the most actionable use cases for alternative healthcare data sets and financial services is the ability to predict quarterly earnings. So often when companies report quarterly earnings, there are significant stock, mo stock movements, particularly in cases where there may be big divergences between what the sell side was modeling for a particular product in a company's portfolio and what the company ultimately prints. And with alternative data sets like open claims data sets that are very low latency, we can often use those data sets, look at utilization that's, that we're tracking in the data set to derive a forecast for what the company is gonna pr print in terms of net sales for a product. Um, and so there's obviously clear alpha to be generated there. Um, so beyond timeliness, another thing that's really cared about and that really resonates is the richness of alternative healthcare data sets. So again, to use the example of claims data sets, there's just by nature, it's a really attribute rich data set. There's a lot of information that you get about a patient's demographics, about the site of care, et cetera. Um, so for example, there's currently a product that's really, that's really topical within the investment community called Avocate from Blueprint, Blueprint Therapeutics. Um, and one of the questions that we get from clients all the time is, how is the drug performing specifically within its newer indication in indolent systemic mastocytosis? And we have the ability to use the dosage that we're observing on the pharmacy claim to stratify volume by the original indication and the newer indication and understand specifically how the newer indication is performing, which is what investors are particularly interested in right now. So that's where kind of the richness of the data is really relevant. And then finally, to speak about the longitudinality, another thing that is really relevant about alternative healthcare data sets as compared to traditional research is that there's often an ability to track things like the patient journey and follow a patient over time and understand things like persistence. So this is particularly true for something like a closed claims data set. Um, again, to use an example here, there was a product called Relibrio that came to market in ALS and was ultimately pulled from the market. Um, and we could see using claims data that while we were seeing strength in utilization numbers driven by a lot of new patient adoption, patients were turning off of the drug really quickly. So we were seeing extremely poor persistence trends really early on. And that was kind of a leading indicator of the fact that the, the product just wasn't demonstrating real efficacy in the market and ultimately poor data led to the, 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 the product being pulled from the market. Um, so yeah, I think that those are kind of three facets of alternative healthcare data sets that are really relevant from an investment angle. Fantastic, thank you very much. Yeah. Andrew. The opposite end of the spectrum, not focused on quarterly earnings, focused on other things which we'll learn about. Uh, health Verity's ecosystem supports aggregation and integration of many diverse healthcare data sets. As data sets and type proliferate, um, compared, compared, compared to, to Julia, um, how, are, how, is, how do clients, how do your clients use probably similar data sets in a, in a different way? And how do you maintain data quality and interoperability across these various data sets um, to ensure uh, companies like, like Janssen um, have easy access to data and partners like Ation um, can easily ingest their, your data or the data that you provide uh, to, do their, to, to, to do their analytics. Great, <clears throat> excuse me, thank you Sandy. And uh, again, my name's Andrew Goldberg. I'm the co-founder and COO at Health Verity. 
we're a venture-backed, essentially a healthcare data marketplace based in Philadelphia. And actually everybody on the stage here is a customer of Health Verity. And some of these businesses are actually, we're a foundational uh, data element in the work that they do. And actually some of you in the audience are customers as well. So I feel just at home today. Um, by saying we're the largest marketplace for healthcare data, essentially what Health Verity has done is created software that ultimately manages the identity and privacy of US healthcare data on a national basis. And we have developed relationships with about 75 different data sources around the country. This is going to be medical claims, pharmacy, lab, EMR, death data, consumer data, et cetera. And um, the biggest misconception about healthcare data overall is that because you go out and license healthcare data, you can actually understand the complete journey of a patient. But healthcare data is really like Humpty Dumpty. It falls off the wall and it breaks into a thousand pieces. And it's really hard to reassemble the entire journey because nobody actually knows the denominator of any single patient with respect to the data. And so there's a lot of companies who are ultimately trying to license certain data types because they think the whole answer is there, when in fact it's not. And I'll give you a really good example, especially for your space. Specifically for those people trying to follow drugs of certain drug companies to predict earnings, some of those drugs may actually be blocked in what's called open claims data, but you can follow that patient in closed claims where the data is not blocked. And so understanding how to curate, how to synthesize, how to organize the data to ultimately ask the right question and get the answer to that question without jumping to a data conclusion is a really important part of what we do in operating this marketplace and then synthesizing data around answering specific questions rather than licensing specific data sets per se. Right? As compared to the financial services segment where so much of the focus is on what happened in the last 90 days because you're ultimately trying to predict quarterly earnings, with a client like Janssen, we're looking at data over a decade. Right, because diseases can be slow to show themselves. You've got lots of comorbidities or what's called other diseases that develop in patients. You want to understand not only the, uh, the health journey, but the treatment journey, the lab journey. Right? And, and Janssen's been great about synthesizing different aspects of our ecosystem. In fact, they license more than half of our entire ecosystem uh, for the work that they do. And, and there's different stakeholders who are trying to answer different questions. The data itself is very fungible. It can just be pivoted to answer the questions, whether it's patient-oriented, it's physician-oriented, it's payer-oriented, hospital system-oriented. So it's very fluid in that way and understanding uh, the right way to get it to work. But an organization like Health Verity is, is really critical to make sure that we can synthesize the right combination of data so that you can answer exactly the question that you want without licensing lots of data that has no yield and no return for you.